All right, this is part three of Decision Trees. In the previous video, I went over how you can clean your data using pandas. So we built upon that, um, and we're gonna get the code running that's gonna actually build the tree and display it visually. So um, these are the libraries that you need. It's Skykit, Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib. I'm also showing you GraphViz, um, though I'm not gonna go over in great detail with that, but uh, a lot of people like that library, so I'm including it in the code, and this is kind of how you install it. You can take a screenshot of this if you wanna look at this a little longer, um, but otherwise, I'm going to kind of move on. These should all be pretty easy to install. I have had some people say GraphViz uh, can be tricky uh, for them, depending on what your operating system is and all that. All right, so you have those libraries installed, and now these are the imports that you would need at the top of your code. And, of course, I'm going to make all the, the full code um, available. There will be a link in the description. And I should note that, actually, that includes the code from the last video because you can't really run the cleaning in a separate file. I mean, I guess you could if you saved it, but I wasn't doing that. So you should really run it all as one thing. You clean it in the first part of the code and then run the code that I'm about to show you. And then that's um, all together though in one Python file uh, is how you would do that, all right? So SkyKit Learn is the, the brains behind this. Um, that's gonna do all the calculations and create our tree where pandas and numpy are used to kind of access the data set and run some help run some calculations and then matplotlib is used to uh, see it visually and kind of uh, nuances to um, choosing which um, features in the term features that refers to the columns in our database that you want to use in your tree um, typically, you wouldn't just use all of them. You would select some of them and and then maybe tweak it based on how your outcome is. And so what that looks like is you put the, the columns in here and make sure these names match exactly as they appear in your database as the column headers, right? Um, and then the, the Y here is actually, um, that's whatever your outcome column in column is in our first database that was called cardio and that refers to whether someone has heart disease or not it was like a one or a zero and then this line here is creating um, kind of separating the data right um, it's going to be uh, in a random state and we're going to set aside 20 percent for our test and the rest of it is going to be used for training so th that's what's happening in this line and then we go ahead and we determine um, the max depth I'll go into that in a in a couple minutes in another slide um, and then we do this model dot fit which is really that's what creates it we use our training to build our model okay all right so then uh, it's a good idea to see how your model did and there's a couple of things we can do that um, so using the model that we created with the fit uh, you can uh, use a the predict function um, with your test data to see how accurate it was and so that's what's happening here and typically when we print this out we're going to look to see if there's a score of 70 or above that's um, typically thought to be uh, a good model otherwise you would go back and tweak things so the accuracy is is not always the best indicator though and so getting a good score could be because the data is too closely aligned to your model. Um, and so there's another indicator we can use called the F1 score. And that is conveniently something that's part of the SkyKitLearn library. And so it's real easy to, to use. Um, the code's right here. And again, it'll be all be in the code that's linked in the description. And so, yeah, the F1 digs a little deeper than what the accuracy does and, and looks to see how many times you avoided false positives and false negatives. And again, you're looking for that to be 0.7 or above to make sure that your tree is a good decision tree. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so yeah, I told you I would talk more about the max depth. So again, so like you, I talked about how you might wanna play around with what features you include uh, and see how that uh, affects your accuracy in your F1, but you also might want to 
experiment with the max depth. I usually go for something between three and five. Anything larger can get looking like this, a little unwieldy, a little hard to figure out what's going on, where this is a depth of three and that's a little bit more manageable. And so you'll have to kind of figure that out, uh, what works best for you. And then lastly, like to visualize your tree, like I said, I'm, I'm including the code for GraphViz, but I'm not gonna go over it. It's gonna be in the code commented out. But the matplotlib, which is a little more popular, a little easier to use, and, and usually not a no problem installing it, looks like this. And it's it's pretty straightforward. You just give the plot the, the, the model, um, give it the feature names that you want to include that you you know you just you can just use the variable you include it from above and then what are your outcomes and that's really just for the display um, you can put whatever you want in here and then everything else is kind of like cosmetics making it look nice when it displays and then when you go ahead and run that code uh, you'll get something that looks like this i had a max depth of three for this one these were the features i used and you can see that the tree doesn't always use all the features that you feed it uh, especially when you have a max depth of three, it uses what it determines to be the most impactful features at any given stage or at any branch in, in the tree. So in the next video, I'll show you how you can test out this tree with real-time data. On this, um, let me know if you have any troubles. And uh, like I said, in the next video, I'll show you how you can kind of use it for new data running it through. All right, thank you.